Hi, and welcome back to TechNut. This is the last part of the series on the HP Gen 8 microserver. In this part, we will be doing some optimization to make sure the systems run smoothly and don't use more resources than necessary. The first thing that we're going to do is remove the GUI from the Active Directory server. This will save some Windows updates and a little bit of RAM. Since we're signed in with my account, we're starting Hyper-V Manager as an administrator and signing in using the administrator account for the domain. We're going to open up a connection to our domain controller and sign in. Signed in, we're going to the server manager we're going to select Manage and Remove Roles and Features. We're going to go ahead and select the next step. We're going to select this server. We're scrolling down and selecting User Interfaces and Infrastructure. We're going to uncheck the box, Remove Associated Features. Click Next. Allow Restart automatically and click remove. The installation will start and once it has completed it will reboot your computer. This will take some time so we're speeding up the video for you. Once the process has completed, you can sign back in again and you'll see that the GUI is no longer available. By typing in sconfig, you can get access to the configuration menu. We will now enable the dynamic memory for the server, so we're going to select option number 14 to shut down the server. Once the server is shut down, go into the settings, select memory, and specify the amount of startup RAM. We're using 512 megabytes. We're going to specify the dynamic RAM to allow a minimum of 512 megabytes and a maximum of 1 gigabyte. We're going to save the settings and start the machine up again. We've given the machine a few minutes to start up, and as you can see, it's now using 580 megabytes of RAM. As we will no longer be able to manage the server from the domain controller itself, we need to install the remote administration tools on the file server, where we're going to let the GUI remain. We're opening an RDP session to the server. We're going to close down the stuff that I left behind and go into the server manager. We're going to wait for it to load and select Add Roles and Features. We'll go through the first part without making any changes. And we'll go into Features. Scroll down and expand Remote Server Administration Tools. Expand Role Administration Tools. Expand the ADDS section and select Add Directory Module for PowerShell and ADDS Tools. Next, and install. Once the install is completed, close the wizard. As you can see, under all servers, we only have the file server available. So go into manage and add servers. We'll search the AD for clients. And we're going to add our DC as well as our Hyper-V server. Once the OK button has been clicked, the servers will be loaded into the interface. New categories of servers will appear in the menu to the left. If we open up Hyper-V for instance, 
we'll see our Hyper-V server. But as we don't have any tools for this installed, we can't manage it. So we're going back into add roles and features and adding the Hyper-V tools. Now we can select more than one server in this part, so we're selecting the file server. We're going into features, we scroll down and expand the sections just like we did before, but this time we're selecting the Hyper-V management tools. Click next and install. If we right click the Hyper-V server now, you'll see that the Hyper-V manager is available. And if we open it up, it will connect automatically. Select the server from the list. And there we have our virtual machines. We'll go into ADDS and see what tools are available. You can see that we have one domain controller. And as you can see, there are a lot of tools available for management. We're going to use the familiar Active Directory users and computers. And you can see that it looks just like before. We'll be using dynamic memory for our file server as well, so we're going to go ahead and open the start menu and shut it down. Once the status has changed to off, we're going into settings. We're going back into the memory settings. We're going to leave the startup memory as what we had. We're going to set the minimum memory to 2048 megabytes and allow it to use maximum of 4 gigabytes RAM. While we're here, we're also going to go ahead and give the machine an additional virtual processor. Let's go into processors and increment by one. We can apply. Also, we still have the installation DVDs available. We're going to select none to unmount this. And we will also be unmounting this for our domain controller. We can now start the file server again. The servers are now optimized, but we're going to show you how to automatically map your network drives. Start by connecting to the file server. Wait for the sign-in process to complete and for the server manager to load. For personal folders, the easiest way to share them is for Active Directory. Open up the ADDS from the menu, right-click our domain controller, and select Active Directory Users and Computers. Navigate through the Active Directory to find the user that should have this folder mapped. In this case, we're going to use my personal account as I'm the only one who has a personal folder. Right-click the user and select Properties. Open up the Profile tab, specify Connect, and select the letter for the map drive. We're going to select H for Home and specify the path to the network drive. When we click Apply, we get a warning message that's because the folder already exists and we have to make sure that the permissions are correct ourselves. We click OK and OK again. We will also be automatically adding our media folder, so we're going to close Active Directory. If we go into Tools, we can see that the tool that we need, Group Policy Management, is not available. So we're going to have to go into Manage and Add Roles and Features. selecting our file server. There we go. We're going into features and we're selecting group policy management. Click next and install. In the Tools menu, we now have Group Policy Management available. We'll expand the TechNut domain. 
and we'll create a new group policy and link it to the user's organizational unit. Just right click, create a GPU and link it here. We're going to give it a name. And we're going to click OK. Right click the policy and select edit. Since this policy is assigned to OU containing users, we're going to select user, preferences, window settings and drive maps. Select new, drive map, specify the path to the share, specify the display name and select the letter you'd like for your drive. In our case, we're using M for media. Nothing else will be changed. We have some more settings we're not going to use. So we're going to go ahead and click OK. The drive will now be mapped for all users in the user OU. You could specify to only apply this to specific user groups by using security filtering. But as we have authenticated users, which are all users in the domain, everyone will now get their drive mapped if they have access to map the drive. After restarting our client, you can see that we now have both the media folder and my personal folder available under my computer. The files are there as they used to, and everything is working as it should. The HP Gen 8 microserver series has come to an end. We'd like to thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below, and also, if there is something else you'd like to see us install on our server, let us know. Hope you enjoyed the series, don't forget to click the thumbs up button, subscribe for more, we have more exciting stuff coming up.